Hi, my name is Vincent and today I want to take a look at evaluating limits involving absolute value. So we have evaluate the following limits and we're going to look at two examples but first we have the limit as x approaches 2 from the left of x squared minus 2x over the absolute value of x squared minus x minus 2. So for this example here we could start this by factoring. So we'll have the limit as x approaches 2 from the left of x times x minus 2 in the numerator over the absolute value of, and if we break down this quadratic here, we'll have x minus 2 times x plus 1. Now when students get to this part here, this is where they'll tend to get stuck. But the trick is, when we think of 2 from the left, so this imagine this is you at the test. 2 from the left means a number to the left of 2 like 1.99. So when you're evaluating the absolute value part here, you want to plug in 1.99 mentally. So just imagine we have x minus 2 and then x plus 1. And this will give you negative 0 0.01 and 2.99. But the most important part here will have a negative times of positive is negative. And just know the definition of absolute value that when we have a negative input value, it's important that we change the sign when we evaluate the absolute value. For example, for something like absolute value of negative 5, this is a negative input value, so we change the sign to negative negative 5, which makes it positive 5. So using that concept here, as we approach 2 from the left, this absolute value term is going to be negative, so we have to change the sign in order to get rid of the absolute value bars. So we'll have the limit as x approaches 2 from the left, and we'll have x times x minus 2 over, and we change the sign to make this negative, x minus 2 times x plus 1. So at this stage here, we could cancel out the common factors of x minus 2, and now we could simplify this a bit. This is the limit as x approaches 2 from the left, and we'll have x over negative x plus 1. So to close this out, now all we have to do is substitute. We plug in 2. And this will give us 2 over negative 2 plus 1, which simplifies to negative 2 thirds here. Now remember, the first thing we should have done was check plugging in 2, which would have gave us 0 over 0, which is indeterminate. But our final answer after we simplify is negative 2 thirds. But you can guarantee that if you forget this step here of changing the sign, you'll get positive 2 thirds, and that will be an answer choice waiting for you. So be careful with that step. Make sure that you change the sign, and we'll have our answer here. So now for our second example here, we have the limit as x goes to negative infinity of x plus the square root of x squared plus 6x plus 9. So for this example here, we could try plugging in a number that approaches negative infinity, but this radical term here is going to go to positive infinity as x goes to negative infinity, and x goes to negative infinity as x goes to negative infinity, which would give us the indeterminate form infinity minus infinity. So this tells us we need to work on this problem algebraically and see if we could get terms to cancel. So for the next line, we'll have the limit as x approaches negative infinity of x plus the square root of x plus 3 squared. Notice this term here factors to x plus 3 times x plus 3, which we could call x plus 3 squared. But for the next line here, and let's close this parenthesis, we have to be very careful. When we take the square root of x plus 3 squared, we have to use the concept that the square root of x squared is absolute value x, or plus minus x. If you forget to use this absolute value concept, it's going to throw the problem off and you're going to get this wrong. Uh, so we have to be very careful at this step here. So we'll have x plus the absolute value of x plus 3. But once you get to this stage of the problem, the way that we're going to handle the absolute value when we're talking about limits, just imagine you're at the test. The way you're going to reason this out is you're, looking at, you're going to look at the term x plus 3 and think of a number that approaches negative infinity, like negative 1,000. If you did negative 1,000 plus 3, you're going to get negative 997. Basically, your inner term is something negative, which tells you you have to change the sign 
of your inner term inside the absolute value. So just remember, you plug in a number that's going in the same direction as your x values, and if you get something negative, that means you have to change the sign of your absolute value term. So for our next line, we'll have the limit as x approaches negative infinity, and we'll have x, and we change the sign so we could drop our absolute value bars. So we'll have x minus parentheses x plus 3. So then all we have to do now is evaluate this. This is the limit as x approaches negative infinity. And in parentheses, we'll have x. We distribute this negative to get minus x minus 3. x minus x will cancel. And now we have the limit as x approaches negative infinity of negative 3 here. And notice this is just a constant function. So when we take the limit as x approaches any number, or infinity or negative infinity of a constant, it's just equal to the constant, which in this case is negative 3. So this is our answer to the second example. We have the limit as x approaches negative infinity of our function here is negative 3. Okay, well this is going to conclude this video on evaluating limits with absolute value. Thank you all for watching, and I hope that this was helpful.